Did your mower stop working? This one did. It doesn't start, it's leaking fuel, so we're going to tear into it and see what we can do to fix it. First thing we're going to do is remove the air filter cover so that we can get to the fuel line and drain the fuel. Three screws that hold this air filter housing on. Two are really long, one's really short up in here. They use a 10 millimeter socket or a wrench. It's preferable to use a 10 millimeter socket because they're easy to get to. There's a hose back here for crankcase ventilation. Make sure that when you put it back on you connect to that. The long 10 millimeter screws hold the entire assembly together. The next step in the process is to remove the throttle and choke levers. So we're going to shut the fuel off here. Then we're going to remove the fuel lines and tilt the carburetor and we should be able to remove the whole thing. Pull this fuel line off. I've already pulled the clamp back. I used a pair of pliers to do it. We'll pull up on the choke and throttle levers and tilt the carb and the carb comes off. Um, there is a spring attached to it so be gentle with the spring and remove that. Don't forget to put the spring back on. There's the carb. We're going to sit down with this carb. We're going to take it apart. We're going to see what's going on with it. Normally I check the spark plug first but in this case I didn't and I'll show you why. There's fuel all down underneath there. That's why I didn't pull the plug to check it first. Also, if you look inside this carburetor, you'll see down at the bottom, there's a bunch of crud in there. We know that there's a problem with this carburetor. Now that we've got the carburetor off, it's time to clean the outside before we get started on the inside. We don't want to contaminate the inside with a mess of the outside. Thought I was going to have to scrub this thing. I'm using brake cleaner and it's coming right off. Maybe just a slight scrub and we'll be good to go. Always use some sort of protective eyewear when you're using dangerous chemicals. Well, the outside of the carb's clean. Let's get started on the rest of it. I like to use paper plates or something clean when I'm disassembling. It keeps the parts clean and prevents contamination while we disassemble and reassemble. Remove the screw on the side with the 10 millimeter. This screw here is the float bowl drain. We're going to make sure there's nothing in it before we move on. We don't want to make a mess of things. Be careful of the gasket on it. Make sure that stays with the screw and make sure that it doesn't leak when you tighten it up, otherwise replace it. We're going to remove the entire bowl. Just one screw on the very bottom. This screw is also a 10 millimeter. This is the bowl. Nice and cruddy inside. That's going to go in the chem dip. We're going to clean this thing off. So chem dip's about 50 or $55 at your local auto parts store. It's not real cheap, but it's fantastic for cleaning parts. It's got a nice little basket in it. Works great. I really like it. In goes the float bowl. Inside the carburetor, you'll find the float. Now, one thing you want to be careful of is this pin here. That's the hinge for the float. Push this, pull it apart. Just drop that in our parts basket. We're going to pull this off gently. That's your float. 
shake it, make sure there's no fluid in it. There was a needle inside that seat. This is the needle. There's a rubber tip on it, and that goes down inside. The first look at the end of that needle. Make sure that it's still nice and cone shaped. There's no diggers in it. There's no gouges. If it is, you'll have to get a carb kit and replace it. That goes in our parts. Inside the seat here, we're going to start cleaning that out. We're going to pull the jet out. Remove the main jet down inside here with the screwdriver. Make sure your screwdriver doesn't get into the threads. Main jet's not easy to get out once it gets to that point. There it goes. Main jet and the associated tube. We're going to drop both of these inside the chem dip. You can see through the main jet, but that doesn't mean it's not clogged. You can also see through the tube that isn't clogged because it's a nice clear round hole and it's much larger than the one in the main jet. From the jet through the tube there's an orifice that comes up into the carburetor and if that's clogged nothing's going to happen. We're going to find out if that's any good. So I've grabbed this light. You can see a light spot inside the carburetor. So obviously that's wide open. This screw adjusts the idle RPM. We're going to remove that. I'll measure the distance between the flat of the throttle here and this face and we'll match that when we go to put it back together. I want to take this out because if we remove this screw the orifices behind it will be easily cleaned. Let's see what this measurement is. I'm getting 116, 116 thousandths. What I'll do is lock it. I'll turn this off and I'll put it away. It'll be saved for later. Or you could write it down. Or you could use shim stock. Or anything that's about that size would be close enough. Another screw to add to our parts. This is the screw I was talking about. Removing this screw will allow us to get the orifices inside for cleaning. This screw here is set and capped so that you can only adjust it so far. It's an idle air bleed. We're going to leave that alone. And this thing's going to spend some time in the tank, as you can see. We'll wait a half hour, rinse, and blow it all out. While we're waiting, we're going to clean up these extra parts, and this, as well as this plate here. Be careful of the gaskets. You probably should replace the gaskets. I'm just not going to. I haven't had a problem in the past when I think a gasket is good, and I'm not going to start now. We're going to start blowing out all these orifices, make sure that everything's clean before we move on. First thing we're going to do is blow everything out. Start off with the needle and seat. Next we'll blow through the main jet assembly. And it's coming through. We'll even double check the fuel line through the needle and seat. Blow this orifice out. You can see the material coming out both ends of the carburetor. Now that that's done, there's a couple more orifices in here. We'll double check. According to the manufacturer, you should clean the chem dip off. So that's what we're going to do. Still don't like the way the jet's looking. And I don't have jet drills anymore. So what I'm going to do is just kind of find a small piece of wire to push through there and make sure it's okay. Closest thing I could come to the jet drills that I've had in the past is this piece of red tie. I just peeled off the outer layer. 
what I'm going to do is just make sure that that runs through and clean it back and forth. I don't want to take any material out of the thing. I just want to clean it off a little bit. Make sure that we're getting everything out so that we have a good clean round hole, not a good clean hacked up hole. I'm putting the tube in long end first. Make sure that when you put things together, put them together exactly the way you took them out. The best thing to do for me is I take pictures a lot of times so that I know what I'm doing when I put it back together so I don't have to take it apart again. Okay, the jet's in. Let's put the orifice screw back in. The idle screw. So our width was 115, 116. Let me measure where I just put this. 73 thousandths. 114. I'd say 1,000 close enough. The bowl didn't really clean up too well. We could replace it. We could coat it with something. But we're just going to clean it up with a scotch Brite. This isn't the fun part, and this is taking way longer than I thought. Ideally, we'd use a gas tank sealer or something like that. But this is a lawnmower, so we're going to wash it out with some brake cleaner and keep going. Let's start putting the rest of this together. We'll start out with the needle and seat. If you look closely, there's a lip here. It's going to lock in on the on the float. You can see it hanging there. That has to go inside the seat. Let's put the hinge pin in. There is no adjustment to this float. I know somebody out there is going to say, well you got to adjust the float. Well this float is not adjustable. Let's put the bowl on. I'm going to point the drain away from where the hose goes. So the hose goes in that side. I'm going to put the drain coming out this side so that it's easily accessible if you ever decide to drain it without removing the carburetor. Start out with the big screw. Oh, well, that's tight. I'll put the drain screw on. It's flat on two sides so that when you loosen it up, you don't have to pull it all the way out to drain it. Always start the screws first with your fingers before you put any kind of power tool to them. It's the fastest way to strip them. Now that the carburetor is rebuilt, we're going to start putting it in. We're going to connect the choke and throttle cables. Don't forget to attach your fuel line down here. I've already done that. But when you're putting this housing on, it's easiest to put this hose on first, kind of hold it out while you push it on. Once that's attached, we can put the air filter assembly together. And it all kind of goes together with the three bolts. Start out with this bolt here because it's easiest to get to. That'll hold this in place while we get the other two in because the other two have to go through the carburetor and the gaskets. The toughest part, honestly, is to line up everything as you go as you put the bolts in. We're going to put both bolts in first and then we'll slide this heat shield in behind it. Both bolts are through. The next thing we'll do is put the heat shield in. The heat shield is placed in like this. There's a square on this end for the head and a round side for the carburetor and this basically adapts it and makes a nice little flow out of it. Put the air filter in. Fits nice and snug. There's hooks on the bottom here. They're going to go in these slots down here. Up at the top, it just snaps into place. Air filter's ready to go. The mower's all finished. Let's put some gas in it. Turn the fuel on. See if we can get this thing to start. 
Make sure Clyde has a frisbee. Good catch.